So the big question is this. How are real estate agents like us, who didn't cheat and take on venture capital, and are spending money from our own pockets, how do we compete with these billion-dollar real estate tech companies and iBuyers in a way that lets us bring our services and the things we believe in out into the world and still remain profitable? That's the big question. And on this podcast, we'll give you the answers. Welcome to the iBuyer Experiment. What's up, crew? Hey, guys. Hey, we are back. We're back, yes. Inman announces 14 sponsors for Inman Connect June. Oh my yeah. goodness. 14. That just came out. Just it just 14. it just hit the it just hit the wire. Hot hit the press. Well, and hey, 14, I gotta give, and guess uh, who the last one is? Zoo. The Zoo Delio crew. Hey, so something kind of order. fun. Elliot and I were meeting with a broker of a, a fairly large brokerage the other day and they're bringing Zudelio into their agents, and so we're really stoked for that new partnership. But we were meeting with him, and he said that around the office, people are starting to say, uh. "What's the Zudelio?" <laughs> What's I the Zudelio? I kid you not. Yeah, we Jason. forgot What's to tell you that. Yeah, who, who What's is the Zudelio? Zudelio? Well, I don't want to name names. I'll tell you guys later. Okay. But yeah, and so Elliot and I were like, "What?" Like, <laughs> I was laughing. We're like, Jason would love to hear that. Was that from yes. yesterday? Uh, uh, day a before, days yeah, ago. okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I want to it's give a fun. shout out to Kayla on the Inman Connect thing too. That's <coughs> going to be there. Going to be featured talking about some Dilio. Yeah, power so, some agents. Yeah, Chris Smith will be interviewing me live. Heck yeah, and that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. He's the co-founder of Curator, and he's just a brilliant guy. Uh, he was actually an Inman ambassador, and he worked at Dot Loop, and that guy has worked for billionaires, and so he's got a hell of a resume. He does. I'm excited. Thanks, Chris, for for doing that and um he's a really rad dude too yeah. he just has an awesome energy super rad rad super rad so What's hey up, one Thanks, thing i want to talk about today is if you are um following iBuyers, <laughs> which if you're listening to us i guess you are and uh one thing i want to talk about is mike del Preet came out with some analysis of data and it just hit today it looks like if you're going to sell your home to an iBuyer, do not sell it to OfferPad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Are they raking it in, huh? I don't they're know if that's how it. to interpret it, but of losses, OfferPad only lost on average of $230 last quarter on homes, whereas Opendoor lost, get this, $109,000 per house, and Zillow lost $29,000 per house. Man, no. are they, what are they going on vacations and stuff like that? They have these big con conventions, or how are they losing so much money? Yeah, there's got to be something going on there because even us auditing them locally, well, at we, least they're making the ones that we audit. They just, are making more money. Yeah, here, than, here, than, here's, right. what's, here's what's going on. They're they're growing. They're Exa pushing uh, right, in the new markets. Right. They're hiring as many people as they possibly can, and they're buying all over. They're you know bringing on new offices, new people. Right, new processes and procedures. Their 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 cash burn is is uh, out of control right now. Well, yeah. Why don't you is, is, is spit on that for a sentence more? Just because I think so many people here, like, how can these guys lose money at this rate? Well, I, I, expand uh, on that, Jay. Well, we have investors that see that Open Door can crush it in the future, so yep. they're just pushing money into them to you know waiting for that big payoff. Kind of like the Netflix, right, model. Like, they lost money for a long time. Uber lost money for a long time. And then once they had market domination. Yeah, and then, then it's just set up for for uh, profitability. Boom. Dude, okay, so on, on my coaching call the other day, I brought this up, and I just want to bring it up again because it fascinates me. In early 2000s, the founders of Netflix offered to sell to Blockbuster for $50 million. Wait, run that by me one more time. Who's Blockbuster? Blockbuster <laughs> for $50 million? Yeah. Wait, Blockbuster had, I think, had the opportunity wow. to buy Netflix, huh? Yeah, and it's worth like $219 billion Yeah, I'd say today. just a stupid wow. amount. That's so yeah, they're kicking themselves, I'm sure. I know, right? That's Ooh. just, I think that what that speaks to me is just how quickly things can change, right? Because I remember walking around Blockbuster. Oh, I yeah. remember picking oh, yeah. out movies and going and getting my licorice. Have that visceral experience yeah, of that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They're, pr they're pretty, I mean, obviously they've been extinguished for a while now, but I would imagine in their height, they had to have been worth a billion or more, right? Wouldn't you guys think? <clears throat> Uh, I don't think so. Not back then. Yeah, I know. I didn't certainly say, but, yeah. they could have. Billions didn't come until like the right. past decade. But yeah. certainly they could have structured a deal with Netflix, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. At 50 million, they could have made that acquisition. 
They could have, and they should have. Who's out there but listening that wants to acquire, not acquire, because I don't want to sell, but we are looking for a capital investor for equity in Zudelio. Maybe maybe we're the next like real estate opportunity. Yes, we are the Netflix, so there's got to be a blockbuster <laughs> out there looking to yeah. invest That's right. In We've got to expand these models, these concepts, yep. right? We've got to empower these 1.4 million active realtors. Yeah. Well, where Elliot and I grew up was <clears throat> a, a place called Hastings, oh, that's which right. was the same model yep. of Blockbuster, mm-hmm. but it was just a Love local Hastings. thing. And, but they're dead now, too. They don't even exist. Yeah. Hastings, yeah. Actually, it, they smoked Blockbuster, right? Because it was like a superstore. It had all the books CDs and, and books. And CDs. And oh, my videos. gosh. That's so funny yeah. to talk about but CDs. But anyway, that's funny. And then Amazon took that out. Oh, crush. Yeah, <laughs> like a little bug. So we can't even really <clears throat> comprehend what's going to happen in real estate. You know, we can all kind of make our assumptions and imagine it, but it could look really different when you see something like that just over the course of the past 15 years that changed so drastically. Heck yeah. That's what's it's exciting. I think the shift is a gift. I like that. The shift is a gift. Shift is a gift. The shift is a gift. Shift is a gift. And we are shifting for sure. Yeah, we That's are. It's a prime opportunity. Well, it's a great opportunity, too, because if you look at, you know, if you're a team or if you're a high powered agent or if you're a broker, you know, you have the ability right now to deploy a lot of money in marketing, but actually gain a ton of market share by doing it. Because what I see is there's not a lot of it, there's not a lot of them out there that are consistently building a brand image. And so when you are, you stand out. I, yeah, I've, I've noticed that, too. Like we used to always get, you know, at least a handful of postcards of agents sending stuff in our in our mailbox and like i didn't see i haven't seen one for months well i think because agents don't think mail works anymore Mm. i I, how is it how does it not well and the funny thing (laughs) is is you know when we get offer requests gotta get your mail inside zudilio when i'm talking to the agent a lot of times that when when we compete and they're stumbling into the open doors the offer pads it's actually coming from their postcards yeah it's because they're you agents out there listen listening to this realize that they're pretty much making a somewhat passive offer to your client, to your homeowner, uh, homeowner, to your database through that postcard saying, Hey, here's what we'll pay for your cash. Or yeah. here's, here's what we'll pay for your house cash. <laughs> I, 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 th- I think a lot of agents, you know, the, the social media boom has really just pushed everyone to social media, social media, social media. <laughs> and, and they're, they're kind of missing out on some yep. of the, some of the things that were tried and true and they still work. Maybe they work as, as, as effective as they used to well, you or have social to media, just, like, try but now, it, your message. now it's like a, yeah, it's just like an, an open source right there. I mean, there's, I literally have not seen one agent send a postcard or anything in the mail for, for months. Well, and especially when you have a unique value proposition, right? I think, I think today's consumer, again, as we all know, they're super savvy and they are looking for and those, that may be why yeah they, they're, they're not doing done, they don't have that, results they don't have they don't have the cash offer cash offer website that they can be pushing um their clients to on a on a on a postcard right they, they or, only have like yeah. the you know i can give you a free cma yeah or an ability or to or they have to have a listing to you know to, be cool? to market it would be cool if you could you know send out a postcard or a letter just like open door does and says that your cash offer would likely be between this range yep. and you know go to kalos cash offers yeah. to claim your offer absolutely and and, and mm-hmm. the and get that. these agents can do that they yeah can do that with take, take the range of the neighborhood from like low end to high end actually maybe just go like middle end to high end yeah and you know make a postcard and have it say like hey you know the cash offer for your house would be between 450 and 700 interested in claiming your offers visit my website at kaylis cash offers today yep like, absolutely like easy as that and we have subscribers that are like looking for those postcards and i think um it's just a matter of being consistent i know that when we really studied like behavior um like you know, we, we looked at how many people have to look at your message before they would respond to your message. And it used to be like 13 times someone would have to see your message before they could take action on it. Right. So like, what is that in today's crazy, busy environment? It's probably like, what's that ominous approach that we've talked about in the past, right? They need, they want to, you know, hear from you directly, get your message, get your email. It could be a direct email, something of value, you know, those see types you of things. on social media, see you on social media, right? Like Google and see you on Google, like even like Google my business. So that was something that, 
for me, I'm like, if you're a real estate agent, if you're a realtor out there and you're listening and you have not set yourself up on Google, like you must do so. <coughs> and you know, you may need to go get like your broker's general liability insurance policy. I know that we've had to have, we've had to give that to some of our um, realtors that have set up their Google My Business page, but you must be setting up your Google My Business page. I did it for Zudelio just a couple <coughs> weeks ago. And so I can tell you from experience, it was not that hard. Yes, I had to Google how to do it, but um, I figured it out. It was it was pretty simple. And now I get these cool, we get these cool emails every few days that say like, your Google profile has been viewed 220 times or your Google profile has been viewed 120 times. And so it's kind of fun to see that it's working and people are looking at it. So that's another takeaway. Go set up your Google My Business. Mm. Mm. So, that's interesting that Zillow <coughs> loses 29,000 per house and open doors 109,000. That's, that's insane. It's kind of even that hard to a, comprehend. That's what I said. That's what, that's what I said. $109,000 a house. It's, it's wait, like, what, what is this? So it's, what is this open door <coughs> plus SPC? SPC. What is that? That's their stock. So it's because of their, because of how they went public. Oh, okay. But okay. I think, um, the, it's not, that they're losing that per house. It's the expense it's expansion. per expansion. Yeah. house. Like, so yep. they're taking the, they're taking all of their expenses, right? right? And they're saying, okay, like here's our total expenses. And they're saying, if we did, you know, if we did 2000 units, they're dividing their expenses yep. by 2000 to get the unit economics. Yeah, they're raking right. it in on, on actual houses. Exactly. <laughs> but they, yeah, they're killing exactly. it. But they're, Every time we but they're spending right now, like they're freaking it. beasts right now. They're yeah. <laughs> yep. they're and what they are misleading. burning cash. It's very misleading. Yeah, they're burning cash because we can see we and we see you know these homes that Open Door is picking up and you know bringing in six figures on these these flips. Many times we've seen recently where they have six figure margins. Yeah, double six figure. We're like you know two hundred thousand. That's we've seen a couple of two hundred thousand yep. margins. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, even in this market, it's pretty crazy because it's you know it's a pr pretty quick turnaround. Yeah, well, you can sell your house as fast as you can snap your fingers. Now, I would challenge on that too, especially when they have like when you look at the the major eye buyers here in the Phoenix Metro, they're having close to six seven percent market share right now. Which, when we are in the seller's market that we are, that's that's a ridiculous chokehold of power, considering you can sell your house as fast as you snap your fingers. But I would challenge that's having to do with the new builds, right? Like people that need to sell instantly on a timeline that works exactly for them or people that something falls through or they have a, a just that being able to control the timeline is that powerful and it's and it's allowing them to buy well over 500 houses a month which again is a crazy number considering people know that, that they're leaving a serious amount of change on you know on the table in those circumstances when the open market is as crazy as it is so uh, right before we started, there was something that just hit really heavy ab around uh, fly homes. You want, you want to share that that capital raise that just hit? Go for it. Go for it. Can you pass it up? I don't have it in front of me. Well, I get, we can come back to that. <clears throat> Speaking of Inman, uh, another article that just came out, um, which is cool because we've seen you know them grow like crazy. And there's a couple quotes in here that I like. Uh, knock they did a uh, Sean Black just came out with an article and he's going to be one of the speakers at Inman so that'll be exciting to listen to him yeah and hear sure. his perspective everything <clears throat> but it says that um, I mean their expansion is looks like it. they have some crazy plans and said knock is now on a hiring binge and plans to be in more than a hundred markets by 2023 dang yep well, now them and ho them and homeward are going to be going at it man and then throw fly homes and now fly homes, homes in there yeah. too but here's it remember we we were we were talking with our developer earlier Intense. and elliot was like yeah we, we've been we've been getting a lot of luck lately and we're like no it's not luck we were working our tail off but True. however i was trying to be a, modest well, here's a quote <laughs> by sean black luck is the intersection of preparedness and opportunity black said Yep. Nice. That's one of my favorite so quotes. There we go. One of my one of my uh, baseball coaches used to always tell me his definition of luck was when preparation meets opportunity. So I think it's like an Albert Einstein quote. Yeah. Or it's, it's, it's a I, Sean I, Black it's, quote. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not. It's we'll not his Sean. quote. It's right? Sean. Yeah. Yeah, right. It's just yeah. a quote I that he it. said in the I article. Yep. Yeah. But here's actually something that I I read at the end of the article that I don't think 
has, is on the mindset for a lot of people, and not for us at least. Okay, what's this? He says, I'm not an economist, but the Fed has, um, but the Fed committing to hold rates down for the foreseeable future is going to really help home buyers and sellers in general. I think after this summer, housing inventory is going to come back to a reasonable place. And in September, when kids are back in physical school, families have sort of settled down a bit, we'll see more properties um, and fewer buyers. Mm, okay. So I, so I guess um, I hope so we'll too. see what happens. Yeah, I'm saying actually would be healthy. And we'll then see. when the dust we'll settles, see. Black <laughs> says consumers will weigh on the three C's when choosing who to work with. Certainty, convenience, and cost. Remember that, agents, the three C's. <laughs> <laughs> Certainty, <clears throat> convenience, cost. cost. But certainty and convenience are the first. Yeah. And cost is last. I could not agree more. Yeah, I like it. Especially when, they're, especially when they are equity rich, right? Oh, gosh, yes. But yeah, I mean, well, uh, I, I, I haven't heard anybody say that the market is going to start possibly balancing back out as quick as September. The fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so. That's going to have a lot of freaking houses coming on the market. Well, I mean, we had our <coughs> monthly sales meeting today. And what I noticed is, is there were... A lot of people that had listings coming up. Yep, it's true. Yeah. I well, heard, this is know. the normal time you see. Uh, I mean, cycle wise, right? Yeah. You usually see inventory. I mean, obviously you see the, the the amount of sales. It's just, I mean, everybody, right? Like summertime, even though it's a hundred and a million outside in in the Phoenix metro, it's you know you obviously still see the sales cycle go up over the summer. Yep, every year for the last five years. Well, besides last year, but. <laughs> <laughs> I guess 2021, 2021 is our new cycle. Anomaly. I know. I look at 2020 and you really can't make no. any, mm -mm. Mm -mm, you can't use that it's data. The anomaly. Totally. Yeah, well, clearly. But if you, when I got in the business in 2010, what I found, what I saw is about every four years, there, a new trend starts happening. So if we take 2020 out of the equation, I think 2021 is the first year of our new trend hmm. and what the next three years look like, I think. I don't know. Mm. So historically, <clears throat> since World War II, the real estate market has been very cyclical and trends generally every four to six years. So that goes in line with what you've seen. Um, but I would say, too, that even before the pandemic, we were already kind of inching our way up. Like, it was mm -hmm. a good market. You yep. know, it was. It was. Um, so, yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Did you find that that other? Yeah, well, it's uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, Fly Homes uh, it just had a very successful uh, capital raise round of 150 million. Guys, uh, there will never be a time in probably our real estate journeys where there are so many headlines of companies getting hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, like, nine this figures. Is insane. Nine figures. Like, uh, it, every every week. week, every week, you can say, "Oh, Homeward just got like Homeward just got three hundred and twenty million. Knock just got three hundred million. This company's got like hundreds of millions of dollars." What if if you are a real estate agent? I think the takeaway here is, you know, I think Fly Homes will work with you for one. But the takeaway here is things are changing. Absolutely. Yes. You have to get out. You have to get out in front of the change, and start thinking about um, a couple of years down the line and how you're going to be prospecting for business because it's not going to be like, "Hey, I can list your house." Well, yeah. And do you right. want to be a directory you know, on Knock's website, or do you want Knock to be an option in your website? Exactly. Because those are the change. Mm, you know that that's is strong. Yes. Boom. Because that's what's going to happen. And that's what Zudilio is. Exactly. Damn, that's strong. Yep. Yes, it is. What piece of technology are you using to get in front of? to get new business and two, what alternative selling solutions have you aligned yourself with? Uh, totally, well, and if, <clears throat> just just to like be like straight up come from the heart for me on this, like agents, don't be afraid of like these types of things because this is actually gonna make things better. It's, it's gonna, gonna help your you. job, exactly. And if you're willing to align with these types of things, it makes your job better, it makes it easier. And so instead of like, I think it's also understanding how these companies work. Cause I, I for one know that when we jumped into, you know, the more of this, you know, raising capital, tech space, et cetera, you hear that this company gets a hundred million dollars and you think that they get a check for a hundred million dollars. That's not how it works. They get, yes, they have some equity. Yes, they have debt line portion of it, but it also has a very, very fine line of how they can use it. They want to work with you. 
right? Because like if you can if you can take the time to understand their pro their products and programs, how they work, it's a synergistic relationship. Some of them. Well, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not some of the cash buyers. Yeah, mi- minus right. minus you know. Some of Open them. Open door, offer pad, Zillow. Some of them just want to sue you when you have the word offer in your name. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, be like, we're, uh, even we're though we reached out ample amount of times. Hey, Hashtag dude, not we're better. friend, not foe. <laughs> we got to spend some more money. Where, where else can we do it? Yeah, like, five well, lawyers. When's the last, coming when's down the last lawsuit we've had? All right, get it started. <laughs> <laughs> That's Wall Street for you. It's crazy. All right. Where are we done? You got no, anything else? No, I, I, so the. We're um, at 20 you know, minutes. Well, there's two things I think we should should mention on real quick, or one of them um, is the. I, I mean, I just think it's reference of everything is the is the the Rex lawsuit that's going on with with Zillow and NAR. Uh, you, you know, the judge basically uh, threw out their injunction that they were requesting to get you know, on that by basically saying that they were calling him a cartel and you know <laughs> and bullying and whatever else. He threw Zillow, the kibosh on it. Zillow was the real estate cartel. Yeah. Well, we all know that they are, but what? Uh, Elliot, you're Elliot. not allowed to say that. Yeah, the judge that. denied it. The judge said no. <laughs> uh, no Rex. No, nope. cannot just say that they're not a cartel. Yeah, they squashed their anti-competitive practice claims. Yeah, which is actually sort sort of interesting because see, I've been talking with some other you know industry leaders like Keith and I had a couple of meetings with someone who really thought that this lawsuit <sighs> was going to go somewhere. Remember? She was pretty adamant. Yeah, about it. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Rex got shot down. It's like the they're kind of like the the outlier, right? They want to they want to move everything off the MLS. I don't necessarily <clears throat> agree with the the positioning Rex is taking either, though. Well, they have a, that, that's a that's a long way up of up, up a hill for well, Rex. Th- this reminds me of the conversation that we had yesterday, where th- this individual is also a, a good leader in his space, an owner of a financial institution, where he said that. He, you know, had information around a lot of the top agents across the nation were now thinking about starting their own MLS and, you know, things like that because it's the, you know, top 5% sell 95% of, uh, of real been, estate. So, I mean, I know it's a bit of a stretch. But they said, like, the top years. 500 agents sell 50% of the real estate, and that just was like, really? Mm. Five hundred agents that. sell 50% of the real estate? Well, I, I don't I, – Because I, in I our market, really when you really look data, at it, those onesies, the your onesie agents. I mean, I don't I mean, know. That would be like open door or offer pad too. I'd love a Zillow, crack at all right? that business. <laughs> Get rid of the onesies. Who are the top four agents in Arizona? Well, George. Uh, open one. door, offer pad, yeah. Zillow, exactly. and it's another open door. I was say another open door. <laughs> two open doors. Yeah. Offer exactly. pad, Zillow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two open doors, offer pad, Zillow. So. Yep. Yep. They are definitely making some waves. Controlling that market share because they are they're operating off the three C's, guys. The three C's: convenience, certainty, certainty and, and cost. cost. What are you doing to align yourself with the three C's? <laughs> hey, but no. As as we wrap up next this upcoming week, make sure you guys uh, get your tickets for the Inman Connect. Yeah, there's going to be a the lot of really the 17th. Hot, hot, cool stuff on there. You can uh, check out uh, our fearless leader Kayla on there, smashing it. Bringing it home. Yes, and then next Tuesday, excited to have a special guest. He's the CEO and founder of Call Action. His Boom. name is Jesse. He is a smart dude, and he's going to bring a lot of value. I just know it. So stay tuned. Started. Woo woo. Started to talk to Jesse. All right, guys. Enjoy the podcast. Thanks and, for tuning in. Uh, make sure you uh, smash the like button. We truly appreciate you taking the time to be with us here today on the iBuyer Experiment Podcast. Please remember to like and subscribe so that you're notified when we launch new podcasts. We'll catch you on the next one. Show you the money.